Yahoo, 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 YouTube. I am super ganky. And in today's video, we're going to talk about tolerance. Because, you know, I think that tolerance is a little bit like boundaries. And people tolerate a lot in their life for lack of knowing where the boundaries are. If you're wondering why you feel small and insignificant, I would ask you this. What are the boundaries of creativity that you have set for yourself? I think it's easy to be worrying about what other people are doing and what other people are thinking under this false premise, this narrative that has been set by society of positivity. What is the false premise of positivity? I think it's the belief that it's not okay to have a bad day because you're looking at all these pictures on Instagram and your Facebook and you're like, why are all these people so happy, man? I feel like it feels so bad, man. I want to be happy. And then when you see these pictures on Instagram, we learn to tolerate our unhappiness and beat ourselves up until we're happy again. We're like, it's not okay to feel bad. 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 Until eventually we get tired of slapping ourselves in the face and beating ourselves up. And we're like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just feel better. It's, it's okay. But I think that that's not the correct way to address the unhappiness, to address the problem. Because again, these feelings don't generally last that long. It's why we don't beat ourselves up that long unless we have a really good reason to do it. But even then, it's not like effective. What we usually do in times where we're beating ourselves up is look to short-term solutions for our problems. Things like alcohol, drugs, video games, whatever the problem is. But the short-term solution usually doesn't fix the problem. Well, not <laughs> Usually, almost always doesn't fix the problem. You know, if a boat has a leak in it and I'm chewing a piece of bubble gum and I go over to the leak and I just put my piece of bubble gum on the leak, is the leak just going to go away? Is the bubble gum going to last forever? No, of course not. Eventually, I'm going to have to fix the leak in the boat if I don't want to sink. And that's the same thing you should be thinking about with these short-term problems in your life. So again, what is your tolerance level for adversity? Because adversity is something that's going to be present at every point in our life, especially if we're doing creative things. If you're going for short term solutions all the time, I don't think it's very high. Because to deny adversity is to deny growth. And adversity is not something you can overcome with a short term solution. Because it is ever present. It is a long term problem that you're going to face throughout your life. Things are not going to go back to normal just because you want them to. The world keeps spinning. And if you don't spin with the world, you're going to be left behind. Real facts, real facts. Take quarantine, for example. Say you have a computer, right? And you're like a, v a VFX programmer, right? And all you can, you can only use the computers at school. However, now the schools are closed. You're facing adversity right now. And, and you first, your reaction to the situation may be to use short-term solutions. Like, um, say, playing video games, drugs, alcohol, watching TV series, any of that jazz, right? However, the situation is longer than the short-term solution, right? And eventually you find out that you don't, they don't fix the problem. And then they make you feel small and insignificant because now you've wasted all this time trying to engage in these short-term solutions, but they haven't gotten you to feeling any better or feeling more productive. It's hard, man. It's hard to break out of this mindset, but I think that we all have the mental cognitive ability to realize that this stuff is not going to make us feel any better in the long term. And really, it's just making us more dependent on the stuff. And what do you want to do? Do you want to become more dependent or more independent, right? Because an independent person knows how to tolerate life a lot better than a dependent person does. Because an independent person has learned how to fight against adversity and to take it, you know? Because this habit of just beating ourselves up and playing more and consuming more to feel better makes us dependent on what we're consuming. It makes us dependent on what we're playing. And time is limited, so I advise against that, especially here in quarantine. Try to increase your, your tolerance for adversity. A little bit, you know what I mean? And what are you gonna to do to do this? Start by not letting short-term solutions be the first responders to the problems you encounter in your life. You can look at it right now. You don't have, I know the starting point has already passed, but quarantine is happening every single day. Every day is a new day in quarantine because every day is a new day in life. So start looking at taking on quarantine a little differently. Think about your day a little more creatively. Make a schedule. Make, make, a, um, yeah, make a list of things you want to do. This is my new list that I made yesterday. And it's coming in so clutch because I've had such a phenomenal morning because I started listening to this audiobook, um, doing the positive thinking. I'm scripting these videos. 
Things are just going up, man. But I'm telling you, something I did this morning that wasn't, that was, I mean, it was whatever. Was that before I went to sleep, I was watching NILCS, Evil Geniuses versus FlyQuest, right? And it was like 12 o'clock and I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. So I went to sleep. But then when I woke up, the first thing I did was I checked my phone to see who won the matches. And Fly, FlyQuest like completely smashed Evil Geniuses. But the problem is that's like a short-term solution to the long-term problem. Just watching videos to make you feel better, right? And I guess it's situational or whatever. The problem is, the point is, that, that was like one hour throughout the day, the very last thing. And it was a really toxic hour. But after that, because we had this schedule, instead of watching videos for the rest of the morning, we were able to be like, okay, now we're here. Now we gotta brush our teeth. We gotta do 25 push-ups. We gotta juice some bubble gum. We gotta get a glass of water. I didn't get to reply to Instagram DMs or do my morning meditation, but we'll do that stuff later. Then we had to this 30 minutes of an audible book. That was really good, man. It really shook me up. Then we had our motivational speech compilation. We got some idealism in the morning. We did some positive thinking hours on Twitch. We have our film and schedule for YouTube videos, man. Things are just going phenomenal right now. The point is though, what I'm trying to make across, what I'm trying to get across to you is that be a little more creative. Be a little more creative with your time, with your day. You can still do the whole short-term solution stuff. It's not a problem. You can't weed yourself off that immediately. But think about decreasing it a little bit so that you can be a little more conscious of how you're using your time throughout the day. This is the best way to answer the question of feeling small and insignificant in quarantine. Anyway, YouTube, that's the video for today. If you like this video, then would smash that like button. Likes really help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm really trying to get to 10,000 before, before I die. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to be, but I don't know, man. It's hard. <laughs> Leave a comment because I love responding to your comments with Genki energy and positivity. But most importantly, share this video with your friends because we need to get the good word of positive thinking out there to as many people as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.